right, peace, 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 love, joy, happiness, uh, and goodness to the family. As you guys know, class number 28, the 13 things I learned or discovered as a new investor is available now for Patreon Diamond members and three-hour class members. I have the pitfalls of a promiscuous man, which is going to be class number one. We're going to start fresh, and that's going to be class number one. And that's going to be the foundation for everything going forward. Um, part of what I want to do is wake people up, is to undo a lot of what I did do and, and begin waking people up, but amongst other things. But that's one of the things that I want to do. So that's going to be the foundation where I used to give away class number one for new members that signed up for free as a bonus. I will be giving away probably that one as a bonus going forward in the future, later on down the line, not right away, of course. Um, so that's where we're at now. That should be available. What's the day I put on that? What's today's date? Today is the 17th. So we're looking at the 23rd. By the 22nd, 23rd, to 24th, around that time, it will be available. It will be this month. For those that are members this month, it will be available this month, 100%. Um, so now, what we're going to go into now, I'm going to start with a scripture, and then I want to break a couple things down. I want to break a couple things down. I want to read some definitions and touch on some things that you may or may not know or may have not thought about, uh, may or may not have, you know. So the scripture I'm going to pull is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. And it says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, Covet, co covetous, which means it's the people that covet, <laughs> excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, nor drunkards, nor, rele nor revilers, revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. As such were some of you. So some of you were these things before, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Holy Spirit of God, right? So what is a fornicator, guys? What is an adulterer? What is a homosexual? What is a sodomite? So the two things I want to touch on today is fornicator and sodomite, because I think that there is some confusion there. And, you know, a lot of us have bought into this lie, unfortunately, and I have contributed to it, which I repent of. I've, I've repented. I've asked the, the blood of Jesus washed that away. But I have, con I have contributed to the lie that you can freely just go out into the world and uh, indulge in every type of sensual pleasure you want and you're going to live a life that's consequence free no matter what now let's let's um in no area of life is this applicable right you can't indulge your appetite every time you want it because what's going to happen in the future right you can't indulge the the desire to take rest every time you want it because then what happens in the future you can't indulge the the, the, the desire to when people are watching pornography and, and masturbating themselves, you can't indulge that desire because what's going to happen if you indulge it every time you do it, right? These people that developed, they become addicts. They become sex addicts. They have rehabs for people that can't stop indulging, right? So there's nothing in this world you can indulge in with the exception of God himself relentlessly that is of the flesh that can satisfy you. I know I touched on that last, but the, it's important that I reiterate it for what we're going to talk about going forward, right? We have to deny ourselves and stop trying to discover ourselves. Every time we get a sensation, we want to discover ourselves instead of denying ourselves. So we, we want to talk about today is deny yourself instead of discovering yourself. I'm going to do a class after this one called Starve the Flesh, Feed the Spirit on just how to starve your flesh, how to deny your flesh, what that looks like, uh, and the importance of it. And just steps and, and, and tips on how to successfully do so, right? And things that you can do to starve your flesh and the benefits of doing so. So the, the Bible also says the things of the flesh are not of the spirit. The things of the spirit are not of the flesh. So every time we, we feed our flesh, we starve our spirit. When we feed our spirit, we starve our flesh. That's how, it, that's how that goes, right? When you fast and are not eating, you're feeding your spirit. You're strengthening your spirit. And it's not that you're weakening your spirit when you're eating, but it's just staying the same. But to feed your spirit, to strengthen yourself spiritually, you have to starve the desires of your flesh. And one of those desires of the flesh, 
that we was just talking about is fornication. What is fornication? You know, a lot of us don't like that word. And ironically enough, we don't like the word fornication. We like the word sexual morality. I'll tell you why I was, what, what had me deceived in the past is because I, I would read the Bible and I would see, I would see in, in the newer versions, right? The King James Version I wasn't reading because it was more difficult to understand because it was an old English. But I would read the old, the newer versions of the Bible and it would use the word sexual morality a lot of times in place of the word fornication. So when I had, I asked myself, hmm, what is sexual morality? So then I went into the Old Testament and I looked at the laws of Leviticus and I would look at um, all the laws related to sex, right? You cannot lay down with a woman on her period. You cannot sleep with a, a mother and her daughter. Um, and, and a bunch of other laws related to sex. You can read those in the laws of Leviticus. You can look those up if you're curious. So I said, hmm, okay, this must be what's considered sexually immoral. So I, 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 I decided that I could freely fornicate because fornication wasn't the word that I was reading at the time when I was reading it. At least in most of the scriptures that I had came across, that wasn't the word that I was reading there, right? I, I just kept seeing sexual, sexually immoral. All right, what's immoral? Sleep with a woman on her period is immoral. I felt like going down on a woman was immoral. I felt like anal sex was immoral. I felt like, uh, you know, having two women at the same time and lesbianism was immoral. Those things I considered immoral. So I was deceived into thinking that as long as I wasn't doing things that are sexually immoral, that I could be sexually free. And, and, and so when I went into the older versions of the Bible, just how it used to be, and I did a little bit of research, I discovered some interesting things. One of the things is if you look at the King James Version, which is a more, more original version of the Bible that we have in English today, the word fornication is there in place of sex. Sexual morality is there in, in, in part, but the word fornication is there a lot more. So I did this. I said, mm, let me do some research and figure out what is fornication. Because we don't like that word. It, it, sounds, it sounds like what it is. You know what I mean? So I, I did some research. I said, what is fornication? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to read what I came up with, and I'm going to touch on a couple more things today. It says, fornication is a carnal union between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman. It is gravely contrary to the dignity of persons and of human sexuality, which is naturally ordered to be the good of spouse and the generation and education of children. Moreover, it is a grave scandal when there is corruption of the young. Right? So it, it says it is naturally... All right. So it, it corrupts the young, right? So one of the other things that I was looking at and thinking about was what's worse for our communities, right? And I might do a whole video while I touch on this, homosexuality or fornication. It's all bad, but what do you think is causing more damage? Because a lot of the, the fornicators, which we're not going to like that word, and I'm, I'm going to expand on that more in a second, we have this huge aversion to homosexuality because we consider that immoral, and it's abomination, and God has been clear that it's an abomination unto him. An abomination you can't be forgiven for uh, through Christ Jesus, but it is an abomination nonetheless. Right. So. But I find that if you look in most of our communities, there's lots of fornicators. Right. There's lots of men creating children out of wedlock, broken homes, hurt women, hurting ourselves, STDs and the likes. All due to fornication. So if fornication was this thing. Why would there be so much destruction that happens as a result of it? Why are so many broken hearted women and men? Why are so many STDs flying around? Why there's so many, why there's so much destruction in fatherless homes? Why is all this occurring? Right? Why there's so many women that we say are hoes and we can't wife them, but we can fornicate with them? Like, at what point, what, what, what area of the game is that right? Does that make sense? And then I began to think about and ask myself, what's the purpose of marriage then? Like, if you, if you don't have to be married to, whether with one woman or multiple, depending on the time of the society that we're in. But if you don't have to be married in some kind of covenant and union with the woman that you're laying down with, then what's the point of marriage? What's the purpose of it? Why does it even exist then? Right? But anyway, so when I did a little more research on fornication, I, I, I did a little Wikipedia search. And I found something interesting about fornication on Wikipedia. I'm going to read it to you guys. 
it says, for many people, the term carries an overtone of moral or religious disapproval. But the, but the significance of sexual acts to which the term is applied varies between religions, societies, and cultures. In modern usage, the term is often replaced with more judgmental neutral terms like premarital sex or extramarital sex. So what I found in my research is that the word fornication has been removed to some degree from society it, it, it stopped being used as frequently as it is because society wanted to move toward more judgmental, neutral terms. And w what is that a product of? We see that in a lot of other communities. We see women that are quote-unquote prostitutes calling themselves sugar babies because the term sugar baby is more judgment neutral. We see there was a time when you... you, you a retard retardation was an actual condition, you know, and it, they start, they decided that it was too judgmental, so they wanted to, they changed it to mentally challenged to be an, in a more judgmental, neutral society, right? So you have the women's lib movement, women, you, you, we see this all through society, but I'm saying, so who is the author of judgment neutral? So the reason why the word fornication has been taken out of, well, you don't see it in a lot of the newer versions. Um, this is what I'm discovering, but you don't hear people using that word anymore. It's, it's like some old word, and it just, because it's, it carries too much judgment. It carries too much conviction. It carries too much awareness of exactly what it is that you're doing. So society has moved toward more judgment-neutral terms. And so... You know, are you a product of the judgment neutral society? You don't want to be judged. What does that sound like? The 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 uh, the, the, the slut walks and all these women liberation movements. We don't want to be judged. We don't want to, what isn't the destruction of our current society this desire and need to not want to be judged to be able to do what thou wilt without any judgment? Isn't that what everybody's looking for? Don't oh you can't fat shame because it's too judgmental. You you have to just say that you're plump or you're you're um what's the other word? You're big boned or, or or you're pleasantly plumped or whatever whatever these words that they have. Oh we, we can't say fat anymore. We can't call somebody we can't use the word obese anymore because it's it carries too much judgment. We have to move toward more judgment neutral terms. So fornication wasn't judgment neutral enough. And in us moving away from judgment neutral terms, it, it causes us to engage in the things that people of old didn't engage in because there would be judgment for it. Now a girl doesn't consider herself a prostitute if she's a sugar baby because it's a judgment neutral term. It doesn't carry the same word weight of the word prostitute. It doesn't carry that weight. If she had to deal with the weight of that word, perhaps she wouldn't do it. If, if the conviction of the weight of that word was upon her, she probably would say, hmm, I don't want to be a prostitute, but I'll freely be a sugar baby. But no, not that word is too strong. But if you move toward a more judgment neutral word, it makes me feel a little better about it. The judgment is gone. It eases me into it. So the judgment neutralism is a product of the enemy. Because none of us have to worry about judgment if we're not doing things to be judged for. There's nothing wrong with looking at a man and saying that man, is a, if he's fornicating, he's a fornicator and he needs to repent and seek God. If he's a homosexual, he's a homosexual, he needs to repent and seek God. If he's an idolater or an adulterer, he's an adulterer, he needs to repent and seek God. Right? If he's a drunkard, he's a drunkard, he needs to repent and seek God. If he's an extortioner, he's an ex if he's a robber, he's a thief, if he's an idolater, let it be known what it is, but let it be known in a way that upon the judgment, the contriteness comes to his heart and he repents and seeks God. So I, I, I just say judgment neutral is a product of the enemy. And in judgment neutralism, we give our lives over to things that we shouldn't. Because the judgment has been gone, so I, I just want to put. I, I want to. I, I want to give that as something for us to think about. Are Are you doing things and considering it terms that are judgment neutral that you would have been considered negative in the past? 
and what good has come out of what you're doing. So the next definition I want to look at today, before we close out, this is a very important one, because it also said a sodomite shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, right? So somebody sent me a video. Shout out to that brother. Let me find your name, brother. Let me find your name really quickly so I could give you a shout out. K-R. K-R. I think the name is Karel Ruan. Karel Ruan. Shout out to you. Thank you for these videos, my brother. So Karel sent me a video about oral sex and that how, how it has no place in in. And holy people, that, 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 that godly people, people that believe in God, it has, it has no place amongst anybody. But let's, let, let's just, so I, I, I said, let me look up the definition of what sodomy is. And it, we can find a lot of insight in just looking up the definition. A lot of times we go off doing things with no understanding because we don't know the definition of the word. So when I looked at the definition of sodomy, you know what I found? It said sexual intercourse involving anal or Oral copulation. Now, that's a direct definition you can get off Google. Now, be, for us to enter a more judgment-neutral society, in some definitions you are going to find, sodomy is only going to be considered anal. Because now it's so common in society, and sodomy is a negative judgment, it's a judgment-forward uh, word, and so because... Oral copulation is so natural amongst marriages, Christians, Muslims, everybody on the globe. That definition has been taken away from that word in some areas. But if you Google right now, sodomy definition, the one that pops up on Google will tell you it's oral. So what I've come to discover, what I believe, because it doesn't say this, but or I mean, sodomy is placing the penis or the vagina anywhere that it does not belong. I believe a woman placing a plastic dildo into her private parts is also considered sodomy. A vibrator, I think those things are considered sodomy because it's placing things that have no place in things in those. It's placing something plastic into your thing. It's placing a mouth on the thing. Anytime you're misusing your private parts and placing them in areas where they're not created to be, I would say that that's sodomy. But oral sex is sodomy, guys. So there was a comment on that, and I'm going to read that comment before we close out. There was a comment on that, on the video that my man Karen Ruan sent me. And the comment said, the first thing I would like to do is simply start with the definition of the word sodomy found in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Definition of sodomy is anal or oral copulation with a member of the same or opposite sex. Copulation with an animal is also considered sodomy. Sodomy encompasses oral sex with a member of the same or opposite sex. So really the question shouldn't be, is oral sex a sin in marriage, but rather is sodomy a sin in marriage? The Bible clearly condemns inordinate affection, unnatural and degrading passions in life of a believer regardless of married or not. One of the signs of a morally corrupt society that has come under judgment of God is that they have changed the natural use into that which is against nature. The legal definition of sodomy varies from state to state, but sodomy has been broadly defined as sexual crime against nature. Though the sodomy laws in this country has been ruled unconstitutional, because it used to be illegal in America by the Supreme Court in 2003, so up until 2003, sodomy was technically illegal, which means oral and anal copulation was technically illegal in 2003. Historically, sodomy, usually defined as oral and anal sex, was a crime in many states. Now we can truly understand why there is so much moral degradation in this. Let me find it. Uh, let me find in this country by those who are supposed to be the salt of the earth, because they're justifying sodomizing their spouse. I don't believe that we really understand how destructive this kind of support of sodomy in marriage is. For example. The marriage is supposed to be a reflection of Christ and the church, and we are commanded to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Is there anyone so morally corrupt that they would even suggest that oral sex or sodomy is something to be identified with Christ and the church? The homosexuals look in the Bible and see the relationship with David and Jonathan and identify it as a homosexual relationship. Now we have believers who are practicing oral sex or sodomy, and they look at the book of Solomon, and guess what they are seeing? Or they look at the book of Solomon, guess what? All right, that's fine. But anyway, so you guys get where I'm going. Uh, I wish I got this brother's name. Uh, forgive me, brother, if you, ever, if you see this. I did not get your name. Maybe I could find it really quickly before I close the video. Uh, just to shout you out, I want to give you your credit. I did not get your name on the... 
the initial screenshot that I got. Okay. Forgive me, guys. I'm going to close out strong. The Hidden Conflict is his name. Uh, he, has a, he has a YouTube channel on a, 106 subscribers. His name is The Hidden Conflict on YouTube. Okay. And anyway, so as you guys see, sodomy, fornication, these words have been shifted in our society so that you engage in them. Um, so these judgment-neutral terms are, are, are causing us to engage in things that people never would have or people knew was sin when they did it. So that's it, guys. Peace, 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 and love, man. As you guys know, I believe in Jesus Christ. I've surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. He died on the cross and rose, was buried and rose after three days so that I could be saved. And that is my Lord, my Savior, my Christ, my God. And through Jesus Christ, we can come to the Father in heaven. Um, so that, that's where I'm at with it, guys. If you guys want to have any conversations with me about anything biblical or you're, you're questioning your relationship with God, you want somebody to maybe talk to you and point you in the right direction, email me. Or message me on Patreon. I'm available for that, um, and we can get we can get some of that done, and hopefully we can get you on track and point you in the right direction. Like I tell guys, man, all that spiritual stuff I was talking before led me right here. And people say, oh, "How do you believe in Jesus?" A little bit. This is this, this, like all of this stuff. It's like this white savior, but that's just ignorance. That's a statement of ignorance. Um, and all the other spiritual stuff that people that the people are talking about, I did that stuff. You know. I, I, a lot of it I didn't do all of it but I, I did that stuff I read that stuff I was able to speak and teach on them things uh, and they were wrong and I came to the truth God pulled me out of my darkness so I'm gonna do what I can to help other people be pulled out of their darkness as well and we gotta wake up just because you don't feel it don't mean it ain't true sometimes we're numb sometimes we're numb Right? You eat a bunch of spicy food, you get numb, it ain't even spicy no more, you can't even feel the spice, but somebody else can eat it and they're like, ouch, this burns. Because your sensations ain't where their sensations are because you've numbed yourself by persisting in a certain activity. So just because you don't feel it don't mean it ain't there, you could be numb. Make sure you're not numb. Make sure the stone is off your heart and you have a heart of flesh. So peace, guys. Peace, love, joy, and beauty to everybody here. Drop a comment in the comment section. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. We got more viewers and subscribers. Let's get this channel back up so we can start doing live streams again. Having open discussions and, and really um, just elevating the minds of the people uh, to the best we can. Um, but peace, guys, and love. Appreciate all the support. Everybody's sticking it out with me. I definitely appreciate and love you guys. Peace.